So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Maryam Shrif, a senior petroleum engineering student at the Lebanese American University, and I'll be moderating today's session. So on the behalf of BioPetro, SP Egypt, and Arab Oil and Gas Academy, I'm delighted to warmly welcome you all to the first session of our online course, Drilling Rig and Drill String Components which will be composed of four lectures and presented by an outstanding and highly experienced speaker. So I advise you to take full advantage of his participation to widen your knowledge in drilling engineering. Without delay, let me introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Ashraf el -Shurbagi. So Dr. el has more than 23 years of experience in the oil field, focusing on surface data logging, formation pressure evaluation, drilling optimization where he worked in more than 10 countries, including USA, Houston, UK, Aberdeen, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Egypt, and many others. To highlight, he worked for various companies, including Shell, Eni, British uh, Petroleum, British Gas, and some Egyptian companies, including Khalda Petroleum Company, Gulf of Suez Petroleum Company, uh, Petrobel, Rush Petco, and many others. Uh, currently, Dr. El Shurbagi is a lecturer at Alexandria University, where he teaches several courses, including well site, reservoir dynamics, drilling, drilling and well control, and well operation geology, and also petroleum technology. So please join me in welcoming Dr. El Shurbagi. So, Doctor, we are pleasured to have you uh, with us today. And uh, a reminder before proceeding with the session, if you have any question related to the technical content of the presentation, please feel free to drop it down in the Q&A section. And we will sure try to answer as much uh, as many questions as possible. Uh, now, hope you guys enjoy this session. And Dr. el -Shurbagi, the mic is yours. OK, thank you very much, Maryam, for this introduction. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you again here, uh, and for four weeks, inshallah, we'll go through the rig types and component. And I hope all of this session will be benefit for you. We'll starting this week and this lecture with the rig type and rig component. And our objective will be well planning the different type of rigs and the rig components. Starting with the well planning, we start to speak about what's happening if we need to drilling any well. For any company need to drilling a well, the question now is only one company or only one uh, client can drilling a well alone? Of course, no. There have to be number of different company will be involved for making the hole and the well. In a very brief, we speak about the company which is sharing for drilling any well. The first company, it's called the operating company. The operating company is the company which has the license for drilling. And so, say, as example, BB, British Petroleum, or British Gas, or any company, this is called the client or operating company. They have money and go to any country and go to the government and take the license to drilling at any concession. Okay, that's the first one, which sharing for drilling in oil is the operating company, which has the license to drilling and is a license for the oil and the gas uh, production. This company, when we need to start to drilling, they need a rig. And so they have to employ another company, which you call the drilling contractor the drilling contractor what is the drilling contractor company mainly this company which is the owner of the rig and so the operator company go and starting to what starting to employ this drilling contractor which is the owner of the rig and the drilling contractor already providing the person which is making the drilling crew and so we have now two company operating company and the drilling contractor which provide the rig for the drilling. While drilling the hole or while drilling the well, we have more than one faces. What I mean by one faces, say now we do it to drilling 10,000 feet. This 10,000 feet will drilling in two phases or two holes. Each hole needs a special drilling surface, like what? Like casing, like cement, like wire line. And so the operating company need another company to help for perform all of this uh, 
surface it's called the drilling surface company the drilling surface company and so now we have three company which will be involved for drilling the well operating company second is the drilling contractor third is the drilling surface company example like Schumberger, like Halliburton, like Baker all of this is called surface company okay what is the last one which are will help for drilling a well it's called the logistical support surface what the meaning of logistical it's responsible for the transportation now if as example we are drilling in a rig and this rig offshore and so we need to transport the equipment we need to transport the material we need to transport the person the people which will working on the rig and so we need what's called the logistical support surface and so we need four company will be involved for drilling any well that's all the company okay and we're starting to what's called the well planning what is the well planning the operator company which has the license to drilling have a department this department is called the operator drilling department this department, before starting to drilling in a well, started to collect the information about the area and information about the well, which would be drilled, a lot of information as possible as they can. This information, if the well which will be drilling is development well, or it may be exploratory well. What's the meaning of development well? It's meaning that this concession or this area we already drilling a well before more than wells and so it's easy to take the information from all the offset well in the area and you can gathering this information and use to drilling this well but what if this well is exploration well what's the meaning of exploration it's meaning that new concession new area we don't know anything about the area and so we're starting to drilling there and so we try or the operator company drilling department start to take the information from seismic survey from the seismic survey okay what is the information which we need before drilling the well first one what is the expected total depth of the well what is the well depth the total depth 10,000 feet 20,000 feet we have to decide it before drilling in the well planning in the well planning second what is the type and the thickness of different rock formation to be drilling oh we can get this yes of course we can get this information what is the type is this information will be sandstone limestone shale silt and what is the thickness of each succession of this formation the operator company drilling department try to get this information also they try to know what is the expected formation pressure what is the meaning of formation pressure we have some rock guys contain bores it's called the porosity and the bores inside the formation contain fluids like gas like oil like water these fluids give pressure have a pressure in the formation if the formation pressure if the pressure of the fluids in the pores is high it will be risky while drilling because we make kick off a uh, make uh, uh, gain and a lot of problem while drilling and so before drilling the well in the well planning we have to know the expected formation pressure for this well also what is the depth and what is the nature of any troublesome formation that may be encountered it meaning that while drilling some formation may be cracks and so while drilling maybe have a losses some formation unstable, maybe collapsed on the well. And so all of these studies have to be done before starting to drilling the well through the drilling department of the operator company. The last one here, which is speaking, is the drilling program. What is the drilling program? Before the drilling the well, we have the prognosis or the program in the program give us the detail detail step by step procedures for drilling the well what i mean when we're starting to drilling is the first hole or the first faith in the well what is the mud program what meaning of mud program what is the type of mud which we use it's oil-based mud it's water-based mud or 
What is the mud properties? What is the mud weight? What is the viscosity? Lot of problems you have to know before starting in the mud program. Second, we have to detect it. What is the bit type? Is the bit type will be tricone or will be BDC or diamond? And what is the hydraulic program while drilling? What is the, the pump pressure rate? What is the hydraulic which we're using while drilling? Also, what is the casing and what is the cement program? What is the meaning of casing, guys? When we finish to drilling any face, any hole, say 5,000 feet, we have to cover by a pipe. This pipe is called the casing. The casing, when run in the hole, will withstand the different type of load and of pressure. Say the casing, when run with the casing in some area, we have what is called the collapse pressure, which tended to what to collapse the casing, or we have the burst pressure. And so we have to make a study. What is the specification of the casing, which we have to use in this hole? What is the cement program? What is the cement specification which we use? And also in the drilling program, we have to know the drilling procedures program. What is that? Oh, this is the instruction for the drilling. What I mean, before starting the well, we have what is called the drilling program. This one have to send it to the drilling contractor and also the operating company representative. Which one? The operating company representative is a man all the time have to stay at the rig. His name is the company man. And so the company man, which is the operating company representative, and the drilling contractor have the drilling program and they have all the instruction which you have to follow while drilling. Like what? First, what is the bottom hole assembly to be used? What's the meaning of bottom hole assembly? I will explain in detail next lecture, inshallah. This is what is the uh, uh, drill color, what is the LWD, what is the motor, all of this stuff have to know what is the in the drill string. What is the Time for the equipment inspection and what is the blowout preventer testing procedures? All of this have to be in the drilling program. Also, the guy have to know what is the drilling program which we have to follow while drilling each phase. What's the meaning of drilling program? What is the rotation per minute (RPM)? What is the weight on bit which we applied while drilling? And so, guys, now. We covered in brief what is the meaning of well planning and what is the meaning of the drilling program. That's the first topic. I'll go very brief in this. We'll go directly to the rig types and the rig components. I explain now operator company which has the license. Now I will assume that I am the operating company and the each one of you is the drilling contractor company. What's the meaning of drilling contractor? It's meaning that the company which owner the rig. And now I am as operator company, come and ask you, I need to drilling a well. And so you have to think, what is the first question you have to ask me when I tell you I need to drilling a well? The first question you have to ask me, where? He wear this well. And so the answer, of course, maybe I would drilling this well on land or offshore. And so you have to answer. Maybe offshore and maybe the well land. Okay. And so if I am drilling offshore, what is the first question? The first question will be, are you very close to the shore? or far away from the shore or in remote area very far. Why? I need to know what is the depth, the water depths which are needing for drilling the well. And so guys, for the offshore rigs, I have Jaca rigs, I have submersible rig, I have semi-submersible rig, drill ship rig, and later, I have what's called the platform. That's in case if you are drilling offshore. What if you are drilling on land? Okay, we have 
Okay, the land is depend on what is the depth because the rig which we using in land may be light, may be medium, may be heavy, may be ultra heavy. Okay, and so we will go in detail through each type of the rig. The first one, which is the Jacob rigs, this one is drilled about 400, 600 feet, and recently they are starting to increasing the length of the legs. What is the Jacob rig? It's a rig, as you see here. We have legs. Mainly, it will be three legs. Some have four legs, like this one. But mainly, you have three legs. This rig, drilled not very far from the shore or the water depth is about 600 feet okay and when we need to see what is the advantage of the jacka brick the jacka brick working how by all these jacks and we will see now all the rig will be lowered to the seabed and so it will be fixed and there will be very good platform not affected by the storm, not affected by the wind, not affected by the waves. And so for this type of rig, the advantage is provide a fixed platform, of course, can withstand the storm, can withstand the waves, it's fixed, okay? And all the time you see here, it's to be away from the waves, away from the waves, this distance. Okay, but what is the disadvantage of the Jacob rig? What is the disadvantage? First one, difficulty to tell. It's a problem. While moving the rig from any condition or from any position to another one, it's very hard and difficult. I will show you now how. Second disadvantage, it's hazard for going on and off location. Sometimes, sometimes while drilling, what's happened? We have what is called kick what the kick sometimes while drilling we have a problem some gases is coming from the well and these gases may affect and make a firing and so it's not safe at all in the other rigs like the floating rig we can see you can moving with the rig away from the well but for this one it's very very hard and the other to going we can't, if we have any firing here in the well, blow out, it's meaning is that we can't move with the rig away. That's one of the disadvantages. It's difficult to tell, harder for going and off location. What about it doesn't need marine riser? I will explain in the next slides. Okay, now we will see video, small animation or small video. You see what's happening here for this one. That's the Jaka brick. When it's moved, it's towed by the boots. Here, all the leg is coming up and is starting to floating in this, which is this one of the rig is called the hull or called the platform. And so it will be start to floating. Of course, while moving this rig, you see the water, no waves, no wind, no storm, nothing. You have to be very calm. And so start to moving very, very slowly by the rig. When we come to position, we're starting to lowering the jacks or the legs, as you see, till it's come to the seabed. Okay. And there is starting to lowering again and again more and more deeper to be fixed very good on the seabed like that. Of course, with the weight also of the rig, it will be completely fixing. Then starting to look here to this hull or to this platform, when become fixed, it start to moving the hull or the platform up. This distance will be good distance to be away from the waves. The a second type of the rig, which is the submersible rig, I'll not explain in detail. I speak in detail about the common type of rig. This one of rig, as you see here, this one is reset at the seabed, as you see here. 
Okay, and this one can using for drilling, for production, and for storage facility. It's called submersible rig. The third type of the rig is called the semi-submersible rig. This one is, as you see, is type of floating rig. This type of floating rig. As we see here, we have here that the hull or the deck, and the deck is connected to columns, and the columns is connected to what's called the bantons. Okay, this type of rig is the drilling a deeper water, starting from 600 feet to 7,500 feet. And so we can use it in more deeper uh, water depths. And if you see here, the columns and the pontons give a stabilization for the rig because it will be below the sea level. And so it will be avoiding all the currency of the surface sea water here and will avoid all the waves effect at the surface. And so for this type of rig, it's better better than the drill ship because it is more stable due to the presence of the column and the pontons. When the rig is coming to position, it started to be anchored on the seabed by the anchor. Okay. And so what is the advantage of this type of rig? The first advantage can drill in deep water. Of course, that's the first one. Second one is can function under more severe weather condition than the drill ship. Why? Question why? Because we have the pontons and the column which give more stabilization to the rig. Okay, what is the disadvantage of this type of rig? I have first one, need marine riser and the subsea stacks. What is the need marine? What's the meaning of marine riders? Guys, for the floating rig, we have two type of floating rig, semi-submersible and the drill ship rig. It's a floating. For the floating rig, we need what is called the marine riser. What is the marine riser? It's, I will explain in the next lecture, explain in detail, but just now we have to know that the riser is a pipes with the large size. This pipes connect between here, the duct here, and to the sea bed. Okay, and so the rider is a pipe, larger pipe, which connects between the duct here and to the sea bed. Okay, we're using the riser only, only in the floating rig. What is a floating rig? Semi submersible rig. Okay, and so we know the advantage. And the disadvantage of the semi-submersible rig. One also of the disadvantage of the semi-submersible rig that it has a limited cargo capacity. What the meaning of limited cargo capacity? This one is floating. And so, of course, we're using a lot of loaded material here above the deck. We can hear asking for casing pipe. The casing pipe is very heavy. And so, any load here above the duct, it will affect the, in the cargo capacity of the rig and will be going down. And so it's not good for the semi-submersible rig. Okay. The fourth type of the rig, which is the drill ship. The drilling ship rig is a, is a ship, a floating ship, but it's modified to drilling. Have the tower and have everything for drilling. For the drilling ship is very, very important for drilling a very deep and the ultra deep water. Because in the ultra deep water, we can't drill with the semi sub, but we can drill with the drill ship. What is the advantage of the drill ship? Oh, it can go to 9,000 feet and more. Okay. The advantage first one, it's self rebuilt, it's moving without any. We don't need any boot to tow it and to move it. It's just a shape and it can moving alone. Second one, it's to have a high carrying capacity. High carrying capacity. Third, it can drill in remote area, the very far area and the very tough area. It can drilling in very deep water. The disadvantage of this one, it's to need marine riser and the subsea stacks. Exactly like what? Exactly like the semi-submersible rig. 
it's you need the riser. And the, the riser disadvantage because it's very, very expensive and take a lot of time. And as I will explain later. The second disadvantage, it is not stable as Jacob and as semi-submersible rig. Because this is a drill ship. And so with any waves and any wind will affect on the drilling ship. The last one we'll speak today about the rig type is the platform rig. Is the platform rig. What is the platform rig? It's a type of rig. Yes, it's a rig, but it's fixed, permanently fixed, and used for development drilling and used for production through it. How is come? This one, the platform, I have a video, but unfortunately, I don't know it will be sharing or not. I'll try to share it now. For this platform, the rig is coming here and they're starting to drilling more than will from the same platform. And so the rig will come to the platform and they say you have a very good reservoir here and we need to increasing the production. And so I need to drink more than, more than one well for production. What I have to do, oh, I have to coming with the rig and they start to drilling one well in this direction and the other well in other direction and the other well in other direction and so on. And so we can using this one for drilling more than one well from the same location. Second, this one is used for production. After these wells are productive well, we have a lines, maybe this line is go directly to the shore. Okay? Okay, I'll try to play with the, this video, I don't know. i try just uh, one minute, please. <clears throat> Dr. Ahmed? Uh, yes, doctor. Can I help you? Is working now or not, Mariam? Uh, no, it's not. Of course, just one, please. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ashraf, you, you can send me the two videos at the end and I can add them to... Uh... Uh, now it's working. Okay, it's, so it's working now. Screen. Okay, guys. Okay. We see now that the Jaka break is already is moving now or towed by the boots. Okay, and we see here the legs of the rig is up, coming up. And we starting, if you see here, while moving this type of rig, we see that the water has to be very calm. There is no wind, there is no storm, all of this stuff. And so we'll adjust the rig, adjust the rig floor to be in the direction of the platform. This is our platform, which I explained, okay? And now it's moving, while it's moving, the leg is coming down to come to the seabed, as I explained. And it's starting to going down more and more, and with the weight of the leg, it will be already completely fixed as a seabed. Okay, just be sure that's okay, it's fixed. What we have to do now, they will starting to moving this, the hollow, it's starting to moving up, to be far away from the water. And then the rig floor, as I will explain, will go to the platform. And from this one, from here, we can drilling more than one well in different direction for more production and start to product this one by lines to the shore. Okay, that's this video. We can go. <clears throat> Okay, and so we speak about how many types now of rig. We have the Jacob rig, we have submersible rig, semi-submersible rig, the drill ship, and the last one, which is the platform. And from all of this, I have only two floating rig, which is semi-submersible and the drill ship. 
and the disadvantage of this two type of uh, rigs is they are needing what is called the riser and the uh, subsea stack, which I will explain later next week, inshallah. Okay, now we finish the second topics, which is the rig type which we are needing. The last topic today, we'll be speaking about the that's the type of land rig. We'll be speaking about the rig component. Rig component. Okay, guys. And so here for speak about the rig component. Also, I have question. We have to think again. To facilitate or to be very easy for you to remember the rig component, I will be starting to explain this type or this session by only one question. And this question will go through more one steps to be clear what is the rig component at all. First, what if I asked you that we need to drilling 1,000 feet in the formation now? I need to drilling 1,000 feet. How can I do that? Well, the first answer, I can using pipe. This one is pipe. Steel pipe, yes, steel to drilling the hole. Okay, what the question? I need to drilling 1,000 feet. And so, what about the length of this pipe? As a starter in the oil field, it will be about 10 meter or 30 feet. And so, I have to make a connection with another pipe and another pipe to give me 1,000 feet. Okay, okay. And so, if we need to make connection between one pipe and the other pipe, I have to weld it. What is called the box and the pen, which is thread. I have to weld it here, thread. This one is called the tool join, the thread. This one is called tool join. It will be welded here at the pipe. And so, if we have a box here and the pen here, I can make a connection here by pen with box and another pen with box and so on. And so, guys, from now, this is steel pipe. It will be called the drill pipe. And from this drill pipe, we can expect what is all the recomponent which we need after that. Okay. If we need to connect one drill pipe with another one, it will be like that. This one will be one joint only. If we need to connect, make connection between one joint, and the other joint, and the other joint, it will be called stand. And the please to remember this expression. And so one drill pipe, it will be joint. It's about 30 feet. The stand is three joints, which is about 90 feet. Okay. And if we need 1,000 feet, is meaning that we need to connect more than one stand, more than one stand to give me this one, which you call the drill strip, okay? And so we have joint, drill pipe, stand, and the drill strip. Okay, what is the relation between what I explained now and the red component? Okay, I tell you that I have joint now, and the please, I need to connect it to make a stand, and I need to start to drilling. And so when I go to the red component, the first component in the rig which we have to use which called the derrick this one that's the frame of the rig okay that's the derrick structure have four legs and this one will support all the standards which i explain all the standards to drilling 10,000 feet, I have to prepare standards, and these standards will be supported by what? By this derrick. Okay, and so the first component will be the derrick or must is the same. This derrick is not supported on the formation, it's not supported on the land, but will be supported in what is called the substructure. What is called the substructure, which is here. This is the substructure. What is the function of the substructure? Oh, first one, supported the derrick. Right? The derrick is reset on this one. Four legs is already supported in the substructure. What is the second function of the substructure? Second function will be 
support for the heavy equipment on the rig floor. What is the rig floor? If you see here, guys, that is the rig floor. The rig floor is the surface of the substructure. At the surface of the substructure. And if you have a look here for this slide, you will see that I have a lot of equipment, which is very heavy, like the draw work, which I will explain. I have a dog house. I have here top drive. A lot of heavy equipment. All of this heavy equipment will be supported where? Supported on the substructure. The other function of the substructure, you see here, the substructure here, that's the substructure, and that's the derrick above, and this all the equipment above the substructure, and what is blue here? Oh, I have a space here. This is space used for what? Used to provide what is called the blue out preventer or the BOB, which is solid equipment, solid control for the, sorry, for the control, well control equipment. It will be here with this one. I will explain it here also. And so, starting with the derrick, and then we have the sub structure okay let's go back to the pipe we need one pipe and from this pipe we need to explain all the component okay and so we go to the pipe that is the drill pipe the drill pipe the drill pipe and i need to lifting lifting this drill pipe where to the rig floor what is the rig floor is the substructure surface okay and so I have to use first one which you called the catwalk, this one. What is the catwalk? Oh, this catwalk in which the pipe is laid to starting to lifting to the rig floor here to the substructure, above the substructure, okay? And so catwalk at which the pipe is laid to lifting the rig to the rig floor. After this, I have what is called the pipe ram. If we need to lifting this pipe, from the catwalk to the rig floor, I need a ramp like this, angled ramp like this. What's happening here? We're starting to dragging the drill pipe up or down through the pipe ramp to the rig floor or from the rig floor. And so guys, from only one pipe, I can now see that I have catwalk and I have a pipe ramp, okay? Let's go above the rig floor now. We are going up now. Here. What I have to do when this pipe is coming to the rig floor, what I have to do, oh, I see here first, the V door in the derrick. While dragging the pipe from the pipe ram, if the derrick is, I don't have a V door, what will happen? The pipe, the drill pipe will be stuck here. I can moving it up and drag it up. And so I have here what is called the V door. It's triangle opening in the front of the fairing. Why? To allow the drill pipe to be picked up from the catwalk. Just we arrive to the rig floor. Let's go and see what is in the rig floor. I have a hole in the rig floor. This hole for what? This hole in the rig floor which is the joint of the drill pipe are suspended. I place the joint of the drill pipe in this hole, and this hole is called what? It's called the mouse hole, okay? Also, besides the mouse hole, we have another hole. This hole is called rat hole, rat hole. This hole is used to place the what is called the kelly? I will explain in detail just now. Now, for now, we have what is called the red hole for what to play the kelly. And I will explain what is the meaning of the kelly. Okay. Now, we pick up the drill pipe joint and the place in the mouse hole. Right? Okay. I need now to lifting this drill pipe from the mouse hole and they started to make a connection another joint another joint why okay i need stand and so i need to moving this one from mouse hole to here to this place which is the rotary table and so i need to latch this one i need to lifting this one and so i need what's called the elevator what is the elevator the elevator used to pipe lifting 
and used only while tripping, when only lifting is a stance or lowering is a stance in the hole, we using what is called the elevator. The elevator is open from here and start to latch the drill pipe below the tool joint here, which is thicker than the body of the pipe itself, like this, open and put it here below the tool joint and starting to lifting the drill pipe. Okay. Now the drill pipe or the joint already lifting and I already started to lowering in the hole. Put here in the wheel bore, in the hole itself. Okay. Okay. When the drill pipe or the stand at the hole and not supported by the elevator or by the top drive as I will explain later. And so it's meaning that it's not supported by anything here. I have to using what is called the slips. What is the slips? That's the slips. Used it to hold the weight of the drill string, all the string. If it's not hold it or supported by the elevator or by the top drive or by the swivel, by anything. And so I have to using the slips here to hold all the weight of this one. And we're using this one while the connection and while the trimming, as I will explain later. That's what is called the slips. Okay, from here, that's the elevator. Just we unlatch the elevator from the drill string, I have to using the slips directly to hold the drill string. Okay, now I have the drill string here, the drill pipe, and is already holded by the slips here, and I need to make a connection with another joint. Why? I need a stand. And so, I start to lifting the other joint. Here is the pin, and here is the box, and they started to what? I started to tighten. I need to tighten the two joints with each other. To tighten the two each other, or to relieve the two from each other, I using what is called the tongue. Tongue, I have to exact like a spanner, one up and one down, and they start to what is starting to tighten the two joints, or starting to break out the two joints if we are need to release it. Okay, mainly, mainly now in the new rig, this tongue is become what's called the power tank. This one is. I explain in the in the whole system how this one is working, but in the recent rig or the modern rig, we're using what's called the power tank, which is powered electrical. Okay, and this is the tank to what to tanking, tightening the two. Okay, what is that? The drill pipe spinner. The drill pipe spinner is pneumatic, pneumatically uh, operated device, which is used for what fast connection. If I have here, one joint and one joint, I need to rotate this one very fast to increasing the, the, the rotation and the decreasing the connection time. I'm already using the drill pipe spinner here. That's used for what? For make fast connection and spin off the drill pipe with each other. Okay? Okay. Okay, guys, I have a video also. I will show you later after we finish to see how this one is working and how the thing is working and all of this. Stop. And so, guys, till now, we already finished to pick up one joint and they make a stand this and drag the stand this on the derrick. Okay. If we have three joints, and so I have a stand, how can I rack the stand on the derrick here? We have in the rig component, we have what is called the monkey board. The monkey board what is the monkey board and what is the elevation of this one the monkey board is about 90 feet from the rig floor 90 feet why 90 feet why because the length of the stand is 90 feet and so if i need to racking the stand on the derrick i have here what is called the monkey board where this is one of the guys his name here one of the guys working here in the uh, monkey board, his name is Derek Mann. 
is called the Derek Man. Derek Man is stopping here and they started to racking the stand, which is three joint, it started to racking here in the monkey board. They were in the monkey board. If we see in the monkey board, we have like a fingers. That's like a fingers. And so, just to already prepare one stand, this stand start to go here, and I have the guys, the Derek man here, and they're starting to racking the first stand, the second stand, and so on, and racking all the stand here on the fingers of the monkey board. And so monkey board is about 90 feet, before it was 60 for some rigs, but it's 90 feet, on which the Derek man is working first, second, support the fingers that are used to rack the standards of the grill pipes. Okay, we finish? Yes. What we have also? We have what is called the dog house. What is the dog house? As you see, small enclosure here in the rig floor beside the driller, driller. And the driller use it as office for him and use it as a store for very small object. It's already in the rig. Okay, guys. Now, we finish the first part which you are asking, what you need to drilling a hole 1,000 feet? The answer will be, I need only one drill pipe, and from this one drill pipe, we already go through all the recomponent till now. Okay, let's go to another question. I will ask myself first, and you have to answer by yourself. If we have standards now, I already prepared a lot of standards now, which is racking on the derrick. How can we drill it? If we need to drilling for the depths for depths of 10,000 or 20,000 feet, how can we using this stand? It's very easy. I take lift this stand and go to the rig floor, and what we need to start in drilling? First, I need a rotation. I need to rotate the string to what? To drilling on the land, drilling the formation, the first. Second, I need to lifting the stand from the monkey board and start to fix it or start to make a connection on the rig floor at the rotary table. And so I need system for loading, for lifting the stand. That's the second. The third. Assume that you are drilling now in a hole. When we're drilling in a hole, we had a lot of cutting at the bottom of the hole. And so I need to release, to remove all of this cutting. And so I need to make circulation by fluids to remove all the cutting at the bottom, to remove it to the surface to help for progress and continuous drilling. And so what I mean now for drilling, you need to rotate you need to lifting, you need to circulate. Okay, how can I do all of this? I need the power. And so any rig all over the world, I have to have five systems. The fourth system first, which is the power system. The second one is the hoisting system for lifting. The third one is the rotating system for rotation. The fourth one is circulating system to remove the cutting. The fifth one is the blue out prevention system. I will explain in detail, inshallah, next week. The BOB or blue out prevention to what? To shut in the well and prevent any blue out for safety. No blow out on the rig. And the later, We'll speak about a special rig component for what? For the floating rig. What is the floating rig? Semi-submersible or drill ship. What is the disadvantage for using this? We need a riser and subsea stack, which is very expensive. Okay. We'll starting now with the first system in the rig component, which is the power system. The power system, I'll not explain in detail, just we have to know how can we get the power in the rig? First, we using a diesel engine. This diesel engine start to drive large electric generators. And from the generators, we have cables. These cables go directly to the 
switches and the switches go to the equipment to which we need a power. What is the equipment we need power on the rig? We have like a bump, we have like rotation to rotate the top drive, the swivel. Lot of the equipment which is using while drilling, we need a power for this one. And so that first what is called the power system which using the diesel engine drive. This is new one. The old one we have another one which is the mechanical system. And this one have a lot of disadvantage. Because this mechanical very noisy have to be set up beside the rig because we have a lot of a chain driver between this uh, uh, engine and the rig. And also it's very noisy for the crew. But for the diesel engine, which are using now in the rig, it will be away from the rig, and it's very is no no direct connection or any chain driver between the engine and the rig. Okay, that's the first one, which is the power system. The second system, which we have to use in the rig component, it's called the hoisting system. What is the meaning of hoisting? Hoist meaning lifting. Of course, if we need to lift any stand, we have what's called the hoisting system. What is the function of the hoist system? I have three functions here. First one, supporting the weight of the drill string. Say now we are drilling 10,000 feet. Okay? Okay, and so, or say we have about at least 20 stand. How can we support the weight of the stand? How can we lifting it? We using the hoisting system to what? To supporting the weight of the drill string. Okay, second. Now while drilling, as I will explain in the next lecture, inshallah, we have at the bottom of the drill string, you have a bit. And we have tools, like LWD tools or motor or or. And so, if we have a failure, if we need to change this a bit, and so, if my depth now, or the lens is 10,000 feet, I have to pull out all the stands and change it a bit and the running hole again, 10,000 feet. Which one will support, which one will lifting the drill string in and out? The hoisting system will be responsible for lifting the drill string in and out of the hole. The third function of the hoisting system Guys, please try to understand these points. Say now, we are drilling 10,000 feet, and so the weight of the drill string, say, 100 kilopounds. 100 kilopounds. If I need to drilling, I have to know what is the weight on the bit which we have to using in the formation. This formation, while drilling, it don't need a high weight on bit. And the other formation, we have to increase the weight on bit to drill and so I have to adjust the weight on bit. How can I adjust the weight of the drill string 100 kilopounds? And so what I need the weight on bit, I need 20. And so the hoisting system is lifting the weight of the drill string and only allow by 20 kilopounds only will be applied on the bit, which is the weight on bit. And so the hoisting system will control and maintaining the weight which applied to the bit during the drilling. That's the three function of the hoisting system. Okay, let's go now and see what is the component of the hoisting system. Hoisting system consists of first one is the draw work, second one is the drilling line, and you see the drilling line now. Up and down, up and down. Third component, the crown block, which contains the crown sheave. The fourth one will be the traveling block. And the, the last component here will be the hook, which is this one. Okay? Let's go step by step, each component alone. First, we have the draw work. The draw work, as you see here, used for what? I used to lifting the hole, the, the pipe from the hole and lowering the pipe back into 
the hole. Okay, what the component of the draw work? It's not important to know all the component because we have a lot of component here, but we have which is very important. We have the drum here, we have what is called cat head, we have a lot of shafts, we have a lot of clutches, we have chains, we have gear. Gear for what? Gear to control the speed of the drum, control the speed of the drum. And the direction of the drum, it will be rotated in this direction or in the other direction. We have also break, break, which is to stop moving the drum. All of this where all of this in the draw work. The most important component I need to explain here, which is the drum. The drum here inside the draw work contain here drilling line, which is rapid more than once level here on this drum and uh, coming up from the drum to the crown as i will show from here that's the drum in the draw work and the drilling line is wounded number times around the drum and the end of this line it will pass through the crown and from the crown it will pass through the traveling block that's for the first component of the hoist system, which is the draw work. The second component will be the crown block. The crown block at the top of the derrick, and this is a photo or picture for this one, have different sheaves, number of sheaves here. Okay, and in this sheaves, the drilling line will be strong here, will be threaded here passing from the first sheaf and going down to the traveling block and coming up to the second sheaf to the traveling block and so on. And so that's called the crown block. The question, where is the crown block? The crown block will be between the drum and the traveling block. Okay? The drilling line, which is coming from the drum, will be run from the drum to the huh? yes right crown block and from the crown block to the traveling block okay why why exactly guys the theory like the crane exactly like the crane if you see here this line if the drum is moving in this direction what will happen in this direction uh-huh this line will be moving here inside the drum and the traveling block will be moving up what if the drum moving in the other direction will be release the drilling line and so the drilling line will be relaxed here and the traveling block will be moving down okay and so guys this line which between the drum and the crown block it's called the first line because it's moved moved inside the drum and outside the drum it's called the first line and the other line which is going from the, the crown block to the anchor here this one is fixed it's not moved and so it's called dead line and for the drilling line, we have first line, which is between the crown and the drum. And we have the deadline, which is between the crown and the deadline anchor, which is that one. Okay? After we go through the drilling line, we'll go to what is called the traveling block. The traveling block mainly, mainly, it will be diamond shape, like a diamond like this. And if we take a section inside and see here, we see a lot of sheaves also. Why? Because as we say, that the drilling line is threaded on the crown and then threaded to the traveling block, again to the crown, again to the traveling block, and so on, and the later is go to the anchor. Okay. As you see here, the traveling block is slung from the crown. It's slung from the crown block, by what? By the drilling line, right? And to connect between what? It's connected between the drilling line here and the hook, which is the last component of the hoisting system. Okay? Okay. 
we'll go to the hook which is this one that be very very strong and this one is uh, carry from here if you see here carry what is called is a swivel which i'll explain in the rotating system or carrying the top drive also i'll explain the rotating system okay and uh, besides the hook here this hook you see we have another two small hook here two small hooks for what you see the small yeah from here we have the link this link is connected to the elevator if you remember the elevator to latching the pipe and the lifting the pipe up and the down and so that's the function of the hook for what for lifting the top drive or swivel and also for lifting the arms which connected to the remember to the elevators okay that's for what that's for the hoisting system guys just i make vast revision very fast revision about all the literature till now and i'm starting to working with the movie or the video which is not worked and i'll open the discussion if we have the time we can make a discussion for different questions i speak very fast it's only two minutes we're speaking about the types and the component we speak about the well planning and we see that we have different company with sharing for drilling a well the different company are the operating company drilling contractor the drilling surface company and the logistical support service and after this speaking about the well planning and we see that the department of drilling in the operator company have to expect the total depth and the sickness and the other problems in the well before starting drilling and later we speak about the drilling program in the drilling program we speak about what the mud program bit hydraulic all this stuff and also we have to know from the drilling program what is the drilling parameter which we using the while drilling after this, we speak about the rig types, and from the rig types, we have offshore rigs and land rig. Offshore rig, we have Jacob rig, and see what is the advantage and disadvantage. And I can go here for this one, which is doesn't need a marine riser or subsea stacks because it is not floating. And so for the Jacob rig and for the land rig, we didn't need any marine riser. And you know the disadvantage. We speak about the very fast about the submersible rig, which is received at the seabed, is not floating. Semi submersible rig, it's a floating one and so needs a riser. The drill ship, as you see, the advantage and disadvantage of all of this. And the platform, which is using for what? For drilling development and for the production. And this be about the land rig. We divided the land rig according to the depths because when increasing the depths, it will increasing the number of standards. And so we need a very heavy or ultra heavy rigs to support the stand, support the stand when you are tripping, to lifting the stand while tripping to drilling is a stand, all of this, and so we can divide the land ring according to the depths and what is needed for the power and for all of this stuff. We speak about the component, we're thinking, how can we, uh, yes, make a derivation, or how you exhibit what is the rig component, starting with the drill pipe, which is one joint, and from one joint, we make stand, and from the stand, we speak about the drill string, and we go to the direct, and the direct here, as you see, we have support to all of these standards. And we speak about the substructure, and you see the uh, function of the substructure. And we speak about the catwalk, bibram, okay? And we go to the V-door. And from the V-door, we go to the mouse hole for the joint and the rat hole for the kelly. Speak about the elevator, speak about the slips, what the function of the slips, and what about the tanks, and what about the spinner. We finish this one and start to speak about the monkey board and the function of the monkey board and the dog house. Later, 
to start the drilling we need power system we need hoisting system we need rotating system and we will stop at the rotating system now okay that's the power system that's the hoisting system okay just I'll show you one video now just a moment please Okay, so thank you, doctor, for joining us today. Welcome. And uh, this session has been recorded and it will be uploaded soon on Pio Petra's YouTube channel, so you may rewatch it if you want. Uh, now I want to remind you about some, some ground rules that I'm sure by now you, most of you know. First, please don't forget to join the Google Classroom for the drill, uh, uh, drill, uh, drill rigs and drill string, strings component course. The codes of uh, the, the classrooms are posted on the Arab Oil and Gas Academy Facebook page, and they are also sent. Uh, they will be also sent by email, I think. And uh, two two codes for the classrooms are posted. However, you're only required to join one classroom per course. Second, once you join the classroom, kindly fill the personal information document. And third, please solve the required quizzes. They are about four quizzes and do the final exam, which will be held uh, by the end of this course, and the date will be posted on the Facebook page. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your certificate. Now, um, have a nice day, and see you in future webinars. Okay. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you, everyone.